JBN keep you informed. I'm Michelle Jones. Hi guys. Before we get into the news, please remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and share the news with someone today. Now on to the news. Privy Council sends Cartel's case back to local appeal court. <laughs> So you drink straight. Dream. Dream. You name God and Michelle. Not me, my mother. Yes. And dream. Tell what time it and dream. And tell me something for God look for him. Yeah. And tell him, say, him are free. Him are free. Him too good. So you get the message him is a him. good man. You ain't get the message to him? Yes. We get the message to him. We get the message to him. I got his son. One son, the children, them love him. 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 Big up Sean Sam, Sean Campbell, see him boy. Yeah man, the in-laws see him boy. Save them. Jaja. Father God. Save us, save us. The Privy Council's ordered that incarcerated dancehall artists, Vibes Cartel and its three co-accused have their convictions squashed for the murder of Clive Rizard Williams. The Judicial Committee of the Privy Council has unanimously concluded that the appeals should be allowed and the appellant's convictions should be quashed on the grounds of jury misconduct and that the case should be remitted to the Court of Appeal to decide whether to order retrial of the appellants for the murder of Clive Resort Williams, the Privy Council stated. The UK-based Privy Council, the highest due of the court system in Jamaica, handed down its decision on Thursday to have the convictions of Vibes Cartel, real name Adija Palmer, fellow entertainer Sean Campbell, otherwise called Sean Storm, Kahira Jones and Andre St. John, quashed, based on the arguments presented last month. On February 14 and 15, the appellants presented arguments on whether trial judge Lennox Campbell should have allowed telecommunication evidence which was obtained in a manner that allegedly breached Palmer's constitutional rights to privacy into the trial. Another ground cited for appeal was the judge's decision to not discharge the jury or the accused juror following allegations of bribery attempts. The appellants also argued that there was an apparent rush placed on the jury to return a verdict, even after the four women had told the judge early in the day that the jury could not reach a unanimous decision. In April 2014, Cartel was sentenced to life in prison with the eligibility of parole after serving 35 years of his sentence. His co-accused were also handed life sentences with Sean Storm and the Jones being eligible for parole after serving 25 years and the St. John being eligible after serving 15 years. The four men first attempted to appeal their sentences in the Court of Appeal, but they were upheld. Trelawney man handed 20-year sentence in killing of two-year-old. 20-year-old Anthony Finley was on Tuesday sentenced to 20 years in prison for the shooting death of a two-year-old child in Clarkston, Trelawney, in March last year. Finn will be eligible for parole after serving 10 years. He was sentenced to 20 years imprisonment for making use of a firearm to commit a felony, 16 years on the charge of murder, and 15 years for shooting with intent. The sentences are to run concurrently. The judge took into account Finley's age, the age of the deceased, 
and the use of a firearm in a dispute in determining the sentence. It was reported that about 7.50 p.m. on March 12, 2023, two-year-old Adrian Campbell was sitting in the back of a car while Finley's cousin was in the driver's seat. Finley, armed with a handgun, walked up to the driver's window and fired at the man with whom he had a dispute. But the man drove off, resulting in the shot missing him and eating Adrian. The child was pronounced dead at hospital. Police identified one of two men found dead in Dumble Holden. The police have identified one of two men who were found dead of the Dumble Holden Main Road in St. Catherine on Wednesday. He is 28-year-old Anthony Chambers, otherwise called Shelley, of Jones Avenue, Spanish Town. The police said one of the men was clad in a blue denim multicolored shorts and a grey boxer shorts with no shirt, while the other was in a black denim pants, orange and red boxer shorts, and a pair of black grey box sneakers with no shirt. The hands and feet of the victims were bound and the heads partially severed. Both had what appeared to be bullet wounds. The Major Investigation Division is probing the incident. St. James JLP counselors Anthony Murray and Gregory Harris disqualified for refusing to swear on the Bible. Jamaica Labour Party JLP counselors Anthony Murray and Gregory Harris were this morning disqualified from taking their places in the St. James Municipal Corporation after they refused to swear on the Bible to take to the oath of office, citing religious beliefs. Murray of the Rosal Division and Harris of the Salt Spring Division had initially chosen to affirm, instead of swearing on the Bible during today's first meeting of the Municipal Corporation under newly minted Mayor of Montego Bay, Richard Vernon. However, the two men were disqualified from taking their seats after fellow JLP Councillor Charles Sinclair, who represents the Montego Bay Northeast Division, objected to their refusal on the grounds that their actions violated the Local Governance Act. Section 30 of the Act states that a person who is elected to the position of a mayor or councillor and who does not take and subscribe the prescribed oath of office will be immediately disqualified and shall cease to hold the office. However, more and Harris are contending that they were given the option to affirm in keeping with their religious beliefs when they were freshly installed as councillors on Thursday, March 7, following the February 26 local government election. As a result, Harris and Murray, who were not considered sworn in, had to sit in the viewing gallery. Eventually, they opted to leave the council room together. Interestingly, Carrie Thomas, the People's National Party councillor for the Mount Salem Division, also initially chose to affirm rather than swear during this morning's meeting. However, he relented and swore on the Bible shortly after the objections were raised. The municipal corporation is expected to seek clarification on the issue from the Attorney General ahead of its next meeting. Texts and voice messages reveal murder Campbell Collimore wanted to fix marriage. Same businesswoman Simone Campbell Collimore had pleaded with her husband, Omar Collimore, to give their marriage a second chance and to resume living with her and their children two months before she was murdered in a contract-style killing reportedly orchestrated by him. WhatsApp messages, including voice notes, exchanged between the couple in October 2017 and revealed yesterday during the trial in the Home Circuit Court, the apparently frustrated and dispirited 32-year-old mother and wife was heard telling Collimore that she wanted her husband and wanted her family together and that she was willing to move past this infidelity even though it hurt her. Omar, I want you. I want my family. The kids are hurting. I am hurting. You are hurting. I don't know what else to tell you. She said in one of the messages, I want my man, but you have to want me as much. Separation is not going to work for me. I'm not your girlfriend. I'm not your baby mother. The bottom line is you're not even sure you want me, Campbell Collimore said in another message. Simone Campbell Collimore and Winston Walters were taxi driver were killed when men drove upon motorcycles and sprayed them with bullets as they waited to be let inside Campbell Collimore's Forest Ridge apartment complex in Redales, St. Andrew. Collimore a Barbados-born businessman and his co-defendants, Michael Adams, the alleged contract killer, as well as Dwayne Pink and Shaquille Edwards, are being tried for the double murder. The couple, the court previously heard, got married in 2010 and moved to Jamaica from Florida and resided with Campbell Collymore's parents. Collymore, however, moved out of the home following a massive fight with his wife, at which time he had reportedly threatened that he would ensure that the family would crumble. The fight, which the court heard, Involved Collimore destroying his wife's phone and his wife throwing out his things was sparked by Collimore's alleged affair. At the time, when Collimore moved out, the court had previously heard that he went to live with a family member 
But during the messages, he was heard telling his wife that he had to be living out of his truck and that he was not happy with the way things were. I was getting treated like shit, he told her in one of the messages, as he kept reiterating that their issue did not originate with a woman. Collymore, in his message, emphasized that he was feeling down and unhappy about everything and that he had issues that he needed to work on before they resumed living together. In one of the messages, he was heard telling her that they both needed to undergo intensive therapy. Simone, however, told him that he was using what he claimed he went through at her parents' house as an excuse, even though what he did to her was worse. Both accused each other of not understanding the damage that was done to each of them. You ever think why I'll come home drunk to fall asleep? Collymore asked in one of the messages. His wife, however, told him that while she did not see the problem, she was willing to look past everything to work on their marriage. Collymore, in reply, asked, You think that was a woman? His wife, however, told him that even though she was willing to look past your problem, he was not. I'm saying this for the last time. I want my husband, she continued. Whether you like to hear it or not, you didn't just cheat. You were disrespectful. But I told you I want my marriage. I want my children to have their parents under one roof, Campbell Collymore added in another message. But she later told him that she had realized her worth and knew that she was a good mother and wife and was willing to agree to a separation if that was what he wanted. Campbell Collymore also expressed repeatedly that her husband had not done anything to show that he really wanted their marriage. She also emphasized that everything he wanted was only for himself. She was also heard telling him that she was willing to transfer the title of a jeep in his name as well as the M6 as she wanted to prove to him that she was not controlling and wanted him to know that she was ready to walk away and leave him with everything. Campbell Collymore expressed confidence that she would prevail on her own and urge him to stop the back on 14 and to do whatever makes him happy. She also told him that they were both excellent parents and could share the children. Among the issues highlighted in the messages were that one of their businesses was experiencing financial challenges and that Collymore was in need of money and wanted his wife's help. The court heard early in the trial that the couple and Campbell Collymore's parents and his sister all went for counselling before she moved in with her husband. JBN we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.